If you watched a single F1 Grand Prix in 2023, there is a one in three chance that race ended with a Red Bull double podium and either Fernando Alonso or a Ferrari joining them. If you watched all 36 NASCAR races in 2023, you would have seen a completely different podium in all but one pair of races. Of course, you might not even start to think about that in the NASCAR race. The three most important drivers in a cup race are probably the stage winners and the race winner. But today I do wanna talk about NASCAR podiums, those second and third place finishers and why their car numbers are pretty cool. If you've been around sports YouTube or Twitter enough, you might be aware of Scorigami. It's this concept created by John Boyce, checking off this giant grid of boxes as NFL games and then unique scores. This video is my attempt to bring the Scorigami concept over to NASCAR with unique podium combinations. Instead of winning and losing team scores like the Scorigami sheet, we're going to use the car numbers of the first, second, and third place finishers. As I teased in the intro, this is particularly interesting in NASCAR compared to Formula One because a lot of the fun in NASCAR is how how competitive the field is, especially the last few years. More drivers won a NASCAR race in 2023 than have appeared on an F1 podium in the last three years. There are 11 other Cup Series drivers from 2023 that finished on the podium but did not win a race. That is a combined total of 26 drivers or 25 car numbers that finished on a Cup Series podium this year. Along with the competitive field, the other side of the podium number repeat hunt that is particularly interesting in NASCAR is the number itself. In NASCAR, the car numbers are essentially the franchise. Even as team members and even team owners change over time, that number will stick around. Richard Petty will forever be associated with the 43, but that number still competes today with Eric Jones behind the wheel. There's a thread connecting these entries, even though they're decades apart. Between a competitive field, NASCAR numbers being interesting, and me having a little free time this offseason, I decided to go through every race in NASCAR history to log every podium in NASCAR history. I decided to constrain the log of races to NASCAR's modern era that started in 1972. This would be the equivalent of saying Super Bowl era in NFL terms. While the league has gone through plenty of changes since 1972, it's when things like the schedules, teams, drivers start to match more of what NASCAR is today. So I put all 1,707 modern era NASCAR races in one big old spreadsheet, and here's what I found. NASCAR podiums rarely repeat. About 1,500 of the 1,700 races have a podium that happened in just that one race. In 2023, the only podium to repeat when you don't consider the exact order was the 5, 19, and 22 cars at Spring Martinsville and New Hampshire. That's it. I want to make a quick clarification between a repeat of three numbers and those that are exact repeats. The exact repeats are when the numbers finish in the same order and are what I'm calling podium agamis. This doesn't quite line up with the original score agami being unique combinations and I could see myself regretting using the term this way in the future, but the excitement in podiums is how rarely they repeat. In traditional Scorigami, there are limited options for possible game results. But with podiums, we're introducing a third number, and those numbers can finish in any order, so there's a million possible results. So we cut the million possible combinations down to about 50,000 every year because of the card numbers that are running every week, and then we can chop that down again because there's only certain car numbers that could end up on a podium every week. Some of the most successful car numbers in NASCAR history, like 2, 9, and especially the 11, have seen some pretty big success across generations of NASCAR, while other numbers like 3, 43, or 48 have peaked with specific drivers in specific years, leading to fewer chances for those numbers to overlap and repeat in future combinations. To demonstrate how quickly the numbers can change, just think about the biggest driver move from 2022 to 2023 when Kyle Busch left the Joe Gibbs Racing 18 car to drive for Richard Childress. Losing the 18 car from the grid means that so many podiums from the 2010s and even back to the 90s won't repeat unless that number comes back. Switching that card to the number 54 presents a whole new sheet of possible podiums because the 54 has just one win in modern NASCAR. As Kyle Busch moved to the RCR number eight, Tyler Reddick migrated to 2311 and a new home in the number 45. With two wins in 2023, Reddick is already the winningest driver in the number 45 in the modern era. 2311 getting the historically mid car numbers of 23 and 45 running near the front is the most active development in podium combinations. Both car numbers recently have the first modern era victory with Bubba Wallace in the 23 at Talladega 
And then of course the 45, keep winning here at Kansas, first with Kurt Busch in 2022. There are three other car numbers that have got their first modern era victory in the last 10 years. Kurt Busch also got the first modern win for the 41 car that came in 2014 at Martinsville. Justin Haley got the first modern era victory for the 77 at Daytona in July of 2019. Shane Van Bergen got the first win for the 91 here on the streets of Chicago this July. Okay, so now that we've put down the groundwork of what a Pony Megami is and the numbers that make them repeat or not repeat, let me introduce you to the four most common podiums in NASCAR history. Across the 1700 plus races, these have been the top three finishing cars in this order four times each. These four have been the only four since 1981. 16 races from 1972 to 1981 had these exact podium results, but no race since. Here is the full list of podiums that have happened at least three times. There are two types of podium agamis that really stand out. Those that happen really close together or really far apart. If they're all in the same season, that means those three cars really were some of the best that year. They finished exactly one, two, three in the same order three times in a single season. Or on the other side of that, the repeats that are really far apart show the numbers being recycled, which is fun in its own way. Like, for example, we can take a quick dive into 21, 43, 12. The first two occurrences, as you may expect, are back in the 70s with legends in legendary races. David Pearson, Richard Petty, and Bobby Allison finished 1-2-3 in the 1972 Firecracker 400 at Daytona. Then, the second occurrence, again with the same legends, in the 1974 World 600. All three of these drivers were among the first 10 people inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Then, in 2001, the iconic 21-43-12 combination found the podium once again with Elliot Sadler, John Andretti, and Jeremy Mayfield at the Spring Bristol Race. These three guys have 10 career wins combined. Back in 01, there were different rules for the Bristol pit lanes, and teams pitting on the backstretch would tend to be at a disadvantage. Larry McReynolds, how big a disadvantage? Well, well it is. We've only had two races, one from the backstretch in about the last 20 years. In this race, the timing of yellows in the last third of the event led to some split pit strategy, impacted by the location of those pit stalls. Life is tough on the backstretch, and you got to save seconds where you can. So when the 12 car Jeremy Mayfield came in, they went with just two tires because they believed the leaders were going to take four. As the field got started for the final run, Harvick lost a tire from the lead after staying out. We finally had our last caution of the day with about 60 to go. How about this for numbers? Look at the two car numbers leading the race, 21 and 43. Wow. And these guys held on to their track position while Mayfield got around Stewart. That's what gave us the unique era crossing podium. This was not only the first win for the 21 car since 1993, it was the first top five for the 21 in five years. The 21 car wouldn't win another race until a decade later when Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500. John Andretti scored just one top five driving the 43 in 2001, and it happened on the one day that the 21 car won the race. In 2023, we didn't see a podium agami. We had a few sets of numbers repeat, but nothing that matched the exact order. The last podium agami we saw was back in 2022 at the Coke 600. This race featured the 11, 18, and 4 finishing 1, 2, 3, a repeat from one of the Darlington races in 2020, again with Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick. The fact we've only had one podium Megami in the last two years is pretty surprising. For most of Gen 6, you could count on there being three or four podium Megamis every year. The zero podium Megami 2019 season stands out and that can be tied back to a few factors. The big change would be that regular front runners were moving car numbers. Chase Elliott left the podium heavy 24 and switched to a still strong but not as strong in recent years number nine. Martin Shrek Jr. who had dominated for a few years with the number 78 was now running with the number 19. You can see the rebound from those changes with the podium agamis at the end of Gen 6, with the numbers 9 and 19 both showing up in podiums. On top of those changes, you had Jimmy Johnson losing his stride with the 48, Matt Kenseth retiring from the 20, and young guys like William Byron and Alex Bowman occupying other strong numbers like 24 and 88. Now, as we enter the next gen era with an extremely competitive field and that very recently very dominant number 18 car missing from the grid, it might take a while to get Podium Megami's back where they were. Here again are the podiums that have happened at least three times. You can see the now inactive 18 and 88 in recent additions to this list, so those podiums likely will not be around for a while. 
I'll cut down the full list to the podiums with card numbers that are expected to race in 2024 to create a podium Agami high alert list. In addition to those, there are some two timers that could get their third repeat soon. For some quick examples, here are four that have the 2023 championship four as possible race winners. If you want to follow along with podium number combinations throughout the 2024 season, I have just launched a new website called 36X Racing. After every race, I will update the Podium Megami page with some info on that race weekend's podium combination. It's a fun way to look at racing history, especially in NASCAR, where the numbers have so much history and heart behind them. Or some of them don't, and that's interesting in its own way. Thanks for watching this video. Please consider subscribing here and, of course, checking out 36X. It's pretty bare bones right now but I have some fun stuff planned for 2024. It's gonna host projects like this and my start win chart. Those things used to come out as threads on Twitter, but uh, you know, I wanna put them in a different place now. <laughs> um, so check that out, subscribe here. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, I think that's what I've got.